got it. I got it. Ooh. I got it. Woo! Woo! That felt good. Whew. I could go in again. A deal. You're probably wondering why I just jumped into icy cold water in the winter in Michigan. Well, because I had to to wear this stuff. Now you're probably thinking, what do I mean? Well, I had to earn it. <laughs> Sounds stupid, I know, I get it, but hear me out. The harder we men push ourselves, the more we can get away with what we wear. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to go polar plunging like some bear wrestler from the Caucasus Mountains and then just get away with wearing anything, but it's the idea, it's the pattern here that matters. The more masculine we are, the more freedom we have in our choices. We have to earn the clothes that we wear. Dimitris, are you really saying that alpha men should be dressing gay and feminine like some K-pop beta male? Real men don't dress like that. Beta! Or are you literally implying that we all have to conform to toxic masculine standards to wear what we want? I can wear what I want whenever I want, you hateful bigoted piece of shit. Oh, mama. A lot of accusations going from both opposing sides. But the funny thing is, what they both have in common is that they're under this false dichotomy of either or. This versus that. Or brutes versus brains. Or even more specifically, the suited tech office nerd versus the tank top gym rat. Or even the bland conservative dresser versus the crazy colored liberal. And I used to think like that myself too. I thought that, you know, I didn't need the physical capabilities and strength as long as I had my smarts. I don't even think I have that either. But it wasn't always this way. The men who were looked up to in societies did both. <laughs> 370 BC, just sometime around there, Xenophon of Athens wrote a book called the Amnimonevmata, or memorabilia, to make it easier for you. And it's really a collection of Socratic dialogues by his teacher, the great philosopher Socrates. And in one of these dialogues, Socrates was talking to a man named Epigenes, in which he said to him, No man has the right to be an amateur in the matter of physical training. It is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. Now, to bring some context to that, Socrates was appealing to Epigenes' vanity, but only because he wouldn't listen to the real reason why he should, and that was because it was his duty to his people, his state, his nation, you could say, to see the full capabilities of his body to protect them. You see, Socrates, he didn't just believe in cherishing logic, reasoning, and wisdom as a philosopher would, but also of the body and to push it as hard as it can for not only the good of yourself, but of others and your people. Now let's jump to the 11th century AD with the Emperor Ioannis II Comnenus, also known by two names, Galo Ioannis, meaning John the Good, or even the Christian Marcus Aurelius. He was known as one of the best emperors to have ever lived. He was extremely pious, faithful to his wife, extremely charitable, renouncing excessive luxuries and food, and was also merciful and just. He never executed or mutilated anybody. And if you know back in those days, that was quite the shocker, right? But he was also a phenomenal strategist, general, and leader, achieving many victories. And he knew of the power that he had in the magnitude of the imperial rule. And he would dress in all the grandeur of the imperial regalia, like the Loros, when it was needed because he knew of its power and what it represented. You see, he earned it. You could say that the Loros or imperial regalia today is indeed the suit. I mean, it represents masculinity, strength, power, and leadership. But unfortunately, it seems like a lot of dudes who are wearing it don't share in any of those attributes. But hey, I'm not judging because I don't either. So that's why, just like the good emperor Kaloyoannis, we should earn it. And that doesn't mean we just have to stick with typical, basic, classic menswear. We can go crazy. Now, crazy colors, patterns, and pieces aren't just left for the realm of postmodernists, fruity men, or even, you know, your average male BuzzFeed enjoyer. Masculine men can pull it off, too. Your average dude can. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go on a limb and say a lot of times the more masculine a guy is, the better it looks on him, the more he can pull it off. And I'll explain it with a better example than, you know, some Greeks from 900, 2400 years ago. 
Tom Hardy. So when I think of your typical manly man, Tom Hardy is one of the first ones that usually comes to my mind, right? He's strong, he's quiet, stoic, and just essentially badass, right? Well, I think most of us can agree on that. And he can pull off, I'd say, a bow tie with polka dots better than I could. Because if I wore that, then, you know, I'd look like I belong with the Try Guys, which is definitely not what I want to do. So, the more masculine you are, the more freedom you have to wear stuff that is seen as not as masculine, or not even that, just out there. You can pull it off, so to speak. I mean, who am I fooling? I'm not fooling anybody. You know what? Let's take, for example, El Chalo. He's a local flamenco guitarist from Granada, Spain. And this dude screams rugged masculinity, right? But his scarf that he wears is so, you know, I don't know, dainty. It's just not what you'd call super macho, right? And I couldn't pull it off. Even his compadre right there, I don't think he could pull it off. But because this guy... His masculine energy is just so strong and rugged that this juxtaposition really works with him, right? Kind of softens the edge a bit and shows a different side of him, right? Kind of like Emperor Kaloyoannis, right? General, warrior, but also merciful, right? A little smooth, right? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But of course, even with these guys, there is a limit here. I'm not saying to go full on Harry Styles and do it for the sake of subversion, right? But do we have to be well known for our masculinity like Tom Hardy or Steve McQueen or even El Chalo for this to work? No, I don't think so. And that's why I polar plunged. A few years ago, I started hunting and I occasionally work at a Serbian priest farm, you know, helping around and slaughtering roosters. You know, I figure if I'm gonna eat meat, I might as well do the dirty work myself more humanely than, you know, the cougars here would anyway. <laughs> I camp in the summer, you know, rustic camping style, just on a hammock, and I slept in a tent built for summer this winter outside. It was 10 degrees out, or negative 12 for the rest of you, you know, and now I start working out, and you know, it's a struggle, and I take my health more seriously. And hey, look, that was winter, and that's water weight. I'm dead serious. It was water weight. Don't, yeah, don't give me any of that. You know, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then apparently now I polar plunge. And you know what? I don't plan on stopping because look at this. I live in excessive comfort, right? Most of us in the first world live in excessive comfort, and we have to actively resist it and sacrifice it for our own betterment. Because you know what? I can tell you this. You cannot appreciate a heated house and your own bed until you slept on the cold hard ground. Now, I can already hear and understand the opposing arguments to all this, you know. Just do what makes you happy and be confident in yourself. It's 2022, you know, no need for fragile masculinity because you don't need to prove yourself to anyone. Okay. Now, I can understand you if these are the arguments that you have, um, but I'm going to hit you with a big dose of reality before we go any further. Uh, happiness as a justification is one of the dumbest and worst reasons to justify anything. And just an example, revenge really makes me happy. Yeah, see, happiness is a justification until it's not and it goes against you. So let's just get that out of the way. And being confident in myself. Well, maybe I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing all this. So I can earn the right to be confident in myself. The whole reason for all this, right? And the idea of fragile masculinity, it's 2022. Okay, you know what? With the 2022 thing, times have changed, but human dignity hasn't. And with fragile masculinity, yeah, I used to think like that. I didn't care, or at least I pretend I didn't care. And I was never the traditional masculine type, right? I didn't grow up doing hard physical labor. I didn't work out. I didn't know how to change a tire, and I never butchered my own food, right? I played Legend of Zelda. I watched Lord of the Rings, and I dressed up as Batman. And that's pretty much where it ended. But then it began to eat at me because I was afraid. I was afraid of the pain, afraid of the discipline and afraid of becoming what men were physically made to become. But then the fear of not reaching my full potential and becoming the man I was supposed to be overran my fear of the hardships to get there. And I decided that I wanted to become like the men I admired. And it's a struggle. Trust me, guys, it is hard and it is a freaking struggle. But why wouldn't I do the things that made me admire characters like Aragorn, Batman, or Link in the first place? 
You see, it's not about proving yourself to anybody, but to quote Socrates, to know thyself and not worry about seeming to be emasculated or fragile because you know that you're not and that you've earned the right to wear that clothing, right? So once you really do know yourself and truly embody, or at least begin to embody what it means to be a man, you won't have to tell anybody because it'll show. And even if it doesn't to certain people and they think you're a pretty boy or whatever stupid names they throw at you, it won't matter to you because you know who you are. You don't need to justify yourself or care about the opinions of people that don't matter. Only the people that do, whether that be your family, your friends, your peers, your professors, your priests, your coworkers, whoever it is. See, it's not about getting shredded. Physical strength and challenges aren't the only parameters to being a man, right? Or that you need perfect face symmetry and a chiseled jawline to be a man, okay? None of that crap. No more of this Z's BS that you're seeing all over the place. No, I can explain myself in depth. On the After Party Podcast, a podcast of mine, where I explain things like this and more on my Patreon. So if you like what I do, consider supporting me there. It's the only way to. I'll explain this too. Trust me. Okay, anyway. Yeah, we don't need any of this Sigma male, Suda, Alpha male BS that you find all over YouTube, okay? We don't need it. And because remember, this isn't a dichotomy, okay? But if it is something that is honorable, and it's possible to do and you can do it, then do it. And I really think it does need to be emphasized in this matter, in this particular instance, because clothing is at least half physical and comfort does indeed play a part. And I really do believe we need to earn that comfort and its positions, okay? And if you don't know what I mean by clothing being only half physical, then watch this video right here that I've made. It's the most important one I've made so far. So I'll see you there. Adio, brothers.